paper like this. You need paper like me so you can point your f***ing fingers. I say that's the bad guy. That's the bad guy. It's definitely been a challenging um, part of it all. Yeah. Uh, I'm obviously not used to having so many eyes on me, um, so much more criticism obviously as well. Um, so it is hard. I have definitely spaced myself a bit from social media, yeah. um, disconnected a little bit. Uh, I am still very active in, in posting, but I don't sit and read comments. I don't sit and read DMs. Yeah. Um, I kind of post and get off it yeah. um, for my own mental health. Yeah. Uh, I definitely went through a stage where I was reading everything and the negative ones definitely do jump out of you more. You can have so many positive messages which you appreciate so much but yeah. it's the negative ones that kind of live in the back of your mind. And Sky Nicholson, after having debuted as a professional last year, she has been the subject of some harsh criticisms, trying to find that happy medium between an amateur style and a pro style. Being a pure boxer, it is hard for pure boxers because they don't always offer the most entertainment value whilst being effective. So as you can imagine, the people on social media regularly let Sky Nicholson have it, and it's for that reason she has so chosen to distance herself from social media. She might need to. People are awful. Even some of the very best pure boxers, high level pure boxers, boxers far more accomplished than Sky Nicholson. They were criticized regularly for the lack of action and entertainment value in their fights. Pure boxers like Erslandi Lara, 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 Frankie Sanchez, a pure boxer in the men's heavyweight division. You couldn't pay me to watch that guy. He's boring. Some would say the same of Sky Nicholson, though she's a lot better looking than Frankie Sanchez. Yeah, I'd say so. But aesthetic beauty and intrinsic value aside, Sky has chosen to distance herself from the naysayers, the boo birds by way of social media because it can have an effect on a athlete's psychology. They might begin to see themselves in the eyes of their critics instead of their own. I get that. I believe it. But Tiaria Brown, unbeaten Tiaria Brown of the United States, she's not buying it. She says, nope, not buying it. Sky Nicholson, you said you wanted all the smoke. I replied and now all of a sudden you post and get off. Nope, not buying it. We must fight. For the fans. For those not aware, unbeaten Tiara Brown of the United States has spent some weeks now calling out Sky Nicholson for a fight. I have to be honest here, I don't really understand this call out from Tiara Brown because Tiara is a lot further along in her career than Sky Nicholson. Sky Nicholson's only been a professional boxer for a little over a year, whereas Tiara. Tiara's been a pro boxer for approximately six or seven years, having debuted as a professional way back there in 2016. A veteran of 14 professional contests, 14 professional bouts, no losses, no draws, 10 knockouts. She's something special. I've often referred to Tiara as the best kept secret at her around these weights. She's a very talented fighter, a dark horse in this division vision that is a credible threat to far more established fighters than Sky Nicholson. That's what makes the call out peculiar. Tiara Brown should be calling out a more established fighter, I think, than a Sky Nicholson because she gains nothing from fighting Sky. Sky's not a champion. No. She's not yet a cash cow. A fight between them wouldn't be a cash fight. I feel like she's moving backwards looking at a Sky Nicholson as opposed to an Amanda Serrano. This division's undisputed champion, Tiara Brown, having 14 professional fights and being an unbeaten fighter, I would think that she'd want a world title. Yeah, by now I'd think she'd want to fight for one. Sky can't give her that. She's not going to make a small fortune fighting Sky Nicholson, so I view the call out as somewhat peculiar, almost Overkill. I would favor Tiara Brown to beat Sky Nicholson here today. Sky is green. I don't even think Sky Nicholson is a bad fighter per se. I think she needs more rounds in the bank. I think those eggs need more bacon. And she's only been a professional for a little over a year, so I would favor Tiara to win the fight, though if she did, what then? What now? What does that do? What does that prove? That you're too experienced for Sky Nicholson? Yeah, I could have told you that before the fight. Good number of unbeaten up and comers at her around these weights. Sophia Leash, Karis Ardingstall, Raven Chapman, Sarah Liegman, Sky Nicholson. Each one of these unbeaten up and comers box 
on a major platform, but... Sky's the only one that boxes on a major platform that airs fights in America, in the United States. The others... Sophie Leash is a Vazerman fighter. She was in action this past weekend, racked up another victory. She's based out of Europe, as are Karis Hardingstall and Raven Chapman. They're based out of the UK, whereas Sky... Sky's the only one of those unbeaten fighters that boxes on a major platform that shows fights in America. Maybe that's why TR is calling her out? But even if she fought sky and beat sky that's not necessarily a segue to an amanda serrano fight the rest assured if you're campaigning in the women's featherweight division that's the woman to beat not Sky Nicholson. Any step forward at featherweight is a step in the direction of Amanda. In fact, what I think is a more sensible and sensical fight for Tiara Brown is a fight with former champion Sarah Mafood or former world title challenger Nina Menke. Similar experience level. Calling out Sky, but those callouts are falling on deaf ears because she don't spend a lot of time on social media anyway. And for Sky, for Sky, the fight don't make sense. It makes even less sense for Tiara because Tiara should be boxing for a world title. I don't think these callouts are going to result in a fight i don't this is almost tantamount to a a solid contender like a joe joyce calling out a Frazier Clark. Fighter who's on the cusp of fighting for a world title, why would you be looking at an unbeaten up-and-comer that hasn't been a professional that long? It's a step backwards, not forwards. I don't think a fight happens, not between them, not for some time. For Sky Nicholson, a fight with Tiara is a high-risk, low-reward. No reward, actually. She doesn't gain anything from the fight. For Tiara, it's a step backwards, not forwards. She doesn't gain anything from it either. And um, hopefully I have some fight news soon. I'll be dropping it on my Discord as soon as it's all announced and all confirmed, signed, sealed, and delivered. Uh, you know, June the 3rd, Abu Dhabi is the the date. Um, just waiting to confirm opponent uh, as we speak. But um, I'm not the least bit surprised to hear that the site for Conor Ben's next fight will be somewhere over there in the Middle East, Abu Dhabi. I mean, that's that's what I expected. Yeah. That yeah. If you want to put some money in Conor Ben's pocket, the Middle East would be the way to go because they've got big money to pay, big money to play over there in the Middle East. And Conor here in America, in spite of America being one of the bigger boxing markets, he's not a draw here. So if you want to satisfy his financial demands and keep him active, keep him busy, that will be the likeliest place to go. Can't box in the UK till he smooths things over with the BBBOC, and he has yet to do that. The BBBOC themselves have reached out to several commissions here in the United States states the california state athletic commission and the nevada state athletic commission two of the bigger commissions here in the united states every state in the united states has its own commission but some commissions are bigger than others based on the amount of fights that happen within that state and those are two of the bigger commissions the california state athletic commission obviously the nevada state athletic commission they're saying they're not going to license connor they're actually saying they're going to play ball with the bbboc and work in tandem with with them to bring Conor Penn to justice, so to speak, that until he settles his affairs with the BBBOC, they're not going to license him. I wondered if the BBBOC would be able to get the other commissions, the foreign ones, to play ball. And it appears that two here in the United States have already. The silver lining for Conor is that he wasn't planning on fighting here anyway. He's fighting in Abu Dhabi. A region of the world that would still allow Conor Ben to market his fights to a UK audience without Conor actually being in the UK boxing on UK soil. It's an affront to the BBBOC, you understand. In many ways, it's a slap in the face. Connor's not playing by their rules. So I get the sense that the BBBOC, they're not going to take this lying down. If they have already gone as far as reaching out to foreign commissions to ensure that they don't provide Connor amnesty, they got a hard on for that guy. It harkens back to Tyson Fury's situation with the BBBOC many years ago when he tested positive for Nandrolone after the Christian Hammer fight. You know, he was still able to go into the clinch go fight afterwards. Very few people question the efficacy and ethics of that. Whilst clutching at their pearls over this, the Tyson Fury having tested positive for a banned substance was still able to go into a world title fight. BBBOC having knowledge of the positive test that it bar him from competing and they certainly didn't reverse the decision. The fight took place in Dusseldorf, Germany. There is something to be said about that, that before this guy got the chance to fight for a world title, actually won one, he tested positive for a banned substance and we all know what happened. Tyson Fury 
escaped. He stayed away from the sport for two years. He willfully did that. He retired. And whatever ban he faced as a result of that positive Nandrolone test was a retroactive ban. All they did was count the time away, the time he already spent away as time served. They hadn't adjudicated yet because he didn't give them the chance to, the same way that Connor hasn't given them the chance to. He willfully surrendered his license. Plus, they can't suspend it because he doesn't have one. You get the sense he's not going to box in the UK for some years. I am, and I'm very near Connor Benio. I just want to say hello to... No, he's knocked the microphone off. He doesn't want to talk tonight, um, I'm afraid. doesn't want to do anything tonight. He's, he's got his security guy. He just knocked the microphone out of my hand. Clearly doesn't want to do anything. So uh, that's the arrogance of youth, unfortunately. I'd sooner chalk that up to the arrogance of Gareth Davies and the lack of situational awareness. Gareth Davies is one of many pundits that has laid into Conor Ben since this entire fiasco started. You don't need me to tell you that Gareth doesn't keep that same energy for Tyson Fury, who tested positive for something that he keeps for Conor Ben. So that you can turn around and try to gain access to that guy? So that you can then turn around and again and write stories about him lambasting him. I'm not even telling you that Connor's innocent. He says he's innocent. Whereas Gareth says that, in so many words, it's morally wrong for Connor to box Chris Eubank Jr. on the premise that Connor is guilty. Simple. If Connor's saying he's innocent publicly and you're saying he's guilty publicly, your collective views are at an impasse. And for you to try to gain access to this fighter that you deem is being guilty. Are you stupid? No. You're arrogant. You think you can get away with it. Um, and, uh, well, there you go. That's that's life, unfortunately. So, Gareth, just, just, just to paint the picture for people that are listening to the radio, we've obviously got loads of people in attendance for an Anthony Joshua fight tonight. I'm sure that people that do follow Conor Ben on social media are fully aware that Conor was on his way to the arena tonight. He has just turned up. He's taken his seat ringside. Uh, he hasn't done any uh, interviews publicly. Not since his appearance on the Pierce Morgan show that, if I'm being honest, didn't do him any favors. He certainly didn't help to absolve himself of culpability. There's really only one way to do that. He's got to settle his affairs with the BBBOC. So if members of the media and the boxing community at large have already made up their minds about Conor Ben, Gareth Davies included, what else do you need to ask? You know, what else do you need to know? You made up your mind about the whole goddamn thing. Conor says he's innocent. You think he's guilty. At minimum, you believe that the powers that be should operate operate on the assumption that he's guilty so what else need be said what other questions need to be asked you want to use this guy so you have something to write stories about you better do it from a safe distance because he's not playing your game so it breaks down a sheer lack of situational awareness from gareth a davies and a so obviously frustrated connor ben who's frustrated at what all of this is doing to his boxing career the effect that it's having no i'm not surprised he didn't want to answer any of gareth a davies's questions and i'm not surprised he smacked that mic out of his face and finally anthony joshua just posted this image to his instagram stories indicating that he will return to action in approximately 12 weeks time that he's in a hurry to get back to texas get back to work with Derek james it's encouraging because I think that's what he needs. And if it is his intention to get back to work and get back in the ring in 12 weeks' time, I hardly think that's enough time to bring a Tyson Fury fight into fruition. That's a long set of drug-out negotiations, and in spite of all the talk... Can you trust that they could do a fight like that in just 12 weeks' time? Moreover, should you? Anthony Joshua's supporters and critics alike don't feel that's the optimal fight for him to go into right now. And because he's setting this schedule... You're gonna do that fight in 12 weeks? At a time when every Everybody's saying the same thing, that Anthony Joshua needs to show more aggression, that he needs to show more spite. Come on. In the fight, we saw a very good lead hand from Anthony Joshua, a very good jab. I said that in my previous video, but he's still not committing to the power shots, and it's noticeable. Anthony Joshua rose to fame, after all, as a puncher, a big one, a strong finisher. Last couple of fights, he's been more of a boxer. The right hand doesn't seem to have the same bad intentions on it that it used to. The uppercut is seldom seen, though he did let a few uppercuts go yesterday, and they landed. Credit to Jermaine Franklin for absorbing those uppercuts and not going down, not going out. But the right and doesn't seem to have the same bad intentions on it that it used to. He's not committing to it quite the same. The uppercut is seldom seen. The left hook is almost non-existent. Dave Caldwell found the fight sad to watch. He said as much, saying, I found that sad to watch. What he said immediately after Anthony Joshua's win yesterday, you'd never think the guy won 11 rounds to one or 10 rounds to two based on the reactions. Dave Caldwell found the performance sad to watch. Carl Frotch said that Anthony Joshua has lost all of his aggression, his rival, his domestic rival, 
Dillian White said the same. The talent is there and the boxing ability is still there. But he's not confident. Barry McGuigan said, yes, I watched AJ and I'm sorry to say, in my opinion, he is no longer capable of winning the heavyweight world title. He still looks physically imposing, but he's got zero trust in his punch resistance and he's not going to beat any of the top fighters, I'm afraid. Hot takes and knee-jerk reactions immediately after an Anthony Joshua fight are tell the mage these days. The boxing fans on that side of the industry and the boxers themselves, the pundits, the ones on the other side of the industry. They are slaves to the moment. Bit of a gift and a curse for the athlete that's actually performing because that essentially means you're always one fight away from looking great or looking horrible. That stated, Dillian White didn't think Anthony looked good at all. He said, I didn't think he looked particularly good tonight. He seemed a bit apprehensive. The right hand is still there and the boxing skills are still there, but the aggression is not there. But the situational awareness is still there. I'll tell you the truth. It's not even that I disagree with some of these observations. I don't think Anthony's throwing his power shots with the same commitment that he used to either. And I feel the only way to remedy that, to bring back that aggressive, explosive fighter, is with activity. Sharpness. Thus making scheduling another fight within the next 12 weeks the ideal approach. What he should be doing. No, I don't think it should be Fury. I think it should be Otto Valin. I think it should be perhaps Jarrell Miller, Philippe Pergovic. Maybe you run it back with Dillian White, though I'm not crazy about that fight. Activity is the answer. Anthony Joshua's straight right hand or his right cross, it's almost like he's pulling the punch. Arm's not out there as long. He's not stepping into it and driving it the same way that he used to. What many people interpret as Anthony being gun shy, that even if he does let the right hand go, he's not quite committed to it. He's almost pulling it. The uppercut, the left hook. He's not putting punches together, combinations the same way that he used to. I'm telling you, activity is the answer. Activity is the remedy. You need to sharpen them up. Yesterday's fight was all about getting back in the winner's bracket. That's all it was about. Just win. Get yourself back in the winner's bracket and focus on making a statement in your next fight. In this fight, he seemed tentative and somewhat apprehensive, somewhat unsure of himself, and he's not quite committing to his power shots. It's a defense mechanism it is. geared towards not getting countered, ah. not getting hit with a shot that he doesn't see. Still tense. Still needs to loosen up a bit, relax a little, and he'll be more relaxed out there the more you get him out there every time this guy fights every man woman and his dog says that it's make or break for anthony that his entire career is on the line every time that he fights when his fights are so far and few in between well maybe maybe that can get to him but if the guy's fighting off to if they're saying now what they were saying a few weeks ago and a few weeks before that suddenly it doesn't bother you as much because they always say that you're always winning so long as you're winning what he needs to do is not only put distance between himself and the Usyk fights, but this fight as well. Just keep busy, stay active, stay sharp. Another fight in 12 weeks is just what the doctor ordered. Activity is the answer.